Hey everybody, welcome back to Thistle Hill Farmstead. This is part two of our video on repairing our rock shaft uh, valve on our John Deere 3038E compact tractor. So if you didn't catch the first uh, video, I'll put a, a uh, little card right up here so you can catch up on that video and uh, see how we did some troubleshooting and how we removed that uh, rock shaft manifold from the tractor. This video is going to be all about getting into uh, trying to figure out what's wrong with that and repairing it. So uh, come along with us and we'll see what we can do. So we've got it in here on the bench now and you can kind of see the internals and how it works. Um, this arm here is the one that uh, raises and lowers your three-point hitch. So, uh, you know, I would expect both of these to, to turn pretty easily. Um, and then when you twist this, it twists this cam here, which then moves this upper, this whole upper uh, arm in and out and allows this piston to go in and out. And uh, <clears throat> then the lower arm, this curved one back here goes through to this one and as it moves it will also adjust the depth of this piston that's giving you like a bypass there so let me see if I can understand why it's so hard to move <clears throat> whether this piston is jammed up so I think what I'll do is take the uh, C-clips off of it here and then see if these two arms move freely. If they do, then it's definitely the, uh, the valve. This is your rock shaft control valve. This is the body. So let's do that. I think I can just pop these off with a little flathead screwdriver. Just put it in, twist it. See how those come off. I wish that one underneath the uh, <laughs> the tractor came off that easy. We'll take these washers off. And then I don't know how much pressure this is under. Watch your fingers. <clears throat> okay, so that wasn't too bad. So we got this piece. Am I in camera here? In frame. Let me back up just a bit. There we go. And then we got two washers that sit on there. And then, yeah, so this, this shuttle valve is moving pretty easy. So it's these boogers that, okay, that's nuts. That should, <clears throat> that should turn, I would think, pretty easily. So why neither one of those turning or able to turn by hand because <clears throat> I saw another video online where somebody was demonstrating this and literally they were pushing these back and forth with their hand <clears throat> so let's see let's get into it and see what is going on So this is a 15 here. So let's see if we can get this off. Let's see. There we go. Just gotta give her a little leverage. it up something fierce okay just, just pop off of there now let me get my persuasion device here the old good carpenter hammer there we go yeah so uh, make sure I understand exactly where this thing came off 
so that if I have to put it, when I put it back on, Okay, let's see if you can see this. But there is a, there's a line right here on the shaft and there's a line right here on this arm. So uh, those just line up and put it back on. So we'll keep that in mind when we reassemble it. Yeah, it's got all this paint on it here. Oh, well, I'll leave that. Okay, so then we got one, two, three, four, five washers. Five washers in there. That's interesting. And then here we've got a sleeve. And then we've got a shaft. Let me juice that up a little bit. A little PV blaster on there. Wrong one. That one's already been, hasn't been opened yet. There we go. I'm gonna juice that up a little bit with some PV blaster. I'll do the same for this one down here. Can't imagine it's rusted. Uh, is the reason, but it's definitely there's some rust on the shaft here. And I'm looking here. These are welded here, so these have to come out this way. So that means all of this stuff needs to come off. Like this needs to come off, and this needs to come off. Let's, uh, again, give it a little tap, a little tap tap. See what happens. Nothing yet. I don't know if there's anything here on this piece. I'm gonna go look at the exploded diagram again and burst myself in how many pieces there are here. I see this piece has a roll pin here that looks like it's holding it in. So, uh, yeah, but that thing, mm, yeah, it is not moving at all. So uh, I can't believe, I can't imagine they're just rusted up, but I don't know, I've seen where, um, Another video where someone broke this shaft and it was because, again, it was rusted. So maybe we got the same kind of issue here. Let me pop this roll pin out. Messy. Let me move my microphone so that I don't get grease all over it. Let's see if I can get us some more light here. Well, how about that? Is that any better? There we go. All right, let me get a punch. I think I got this right here. My Irwin punches. Let's see if I can. Been knocked in from this other side. So this one. Let's see if I can get. Oh, of course. Look at that. Can't get a punch in there for poo poo. Hmm. It's going a little bit smaller one here. This one's really too small. It's just gonna pop down in there. The problem is I can't get the angle that I need. Let's see if I can twist this around a little bit. 
get the angle I need. If you remember yesterday when we were doing this, I did, I was able to pound this thing around. Oh, there it is. Man, it flew out of there. So now can I get my punch back out? Okay. My hand is heavy and greasy. There we go. Okay. So that shaft looks like it just goes through there. Does this piece here come off? What's that part of the casting? All right, that's where I'm going to go look at my uh, exploder diagram on the computer and see if I can figure out what is going on with these. Why they will not turn freely? Freely. Okay, team, I went inside and looked up, looked at the exploded view. Um, and this shaft is one piece. This piece should slide off. And this shaft is one piece. And there's nothing in between here except an O-ring. And I called the John Dealer, uh, local dealer, and uh, to get the gasket to go back on here because I'll definitely need that and describe to them what was happening. And they said, oh, yeah, we've had that issue before with these shafts getting stuck and we just replaced the whole unit. Huh, I don't do that because just this valve is thirteen hundred dollars and the whole unit, I think, is even more than that. So I did talk to them. Um, I'm going to knock these shafts out and see what kind of condition there are. For both shafts, the O-rings um, and the gaskets, it's $125. So it's worth the effort to try to get these out. Uh, $125 versus, and that's if I need to replace these shafts. They may, I may be able to get them out, clean them up, and they work fine. So uh, let's see what we can do here. I'm not quite sure how to get these out. I guess I can maybe just knock them out. This piece needs to come off. Um, I don't know if I could get a puller on that or if I just pound on this. Let me get a couple blocks of wood to put under here and then we'll do some banging. So I've got it up on some wood here where I can knock these out without any interference. And it's not hitting on my shaft, my control valve underneath. So let's uh, let's thread our bolt back on here so we don't booger up our threads. And give it a little tappy tap. And see if it wants to play nicely. It's moving. Let's go with the big guns. Oops, make sure I'm not jacking up that, jacking up that bolt. Okay. I don't want to flatten that, flatten that nut out. Let's see, let me run it down just where it's right at the end of that shaft. So it doesn't spread that bolt out at all. There we go, that should do it. Let me take a look underneath here, make sure everything's coming out okay. 
Yep. Yep. I'm going to stop the video here because I don't want you guys to make the same mistake that I made. And you'll see that mistake later on in the video. If you'll notice that when I was hammering on that shaft, it did move down maybe a quarter of an inch and then it stopped abruptly. And the reason for that is that there is a key in there, Woodruff key that is on that shaft that holds that little black piece um, on to keep it from turning. And what was happening was that key was contacting the housing, the manifold housing, and that's what was stopping the shaft from going any further down. Um, you'll see as I turn it over and tap that shaft back in, you can then see the key. What I should have done at this point was take some type of puller and try to pull that uh, round piece off of the shaft and off of that key and then get the key out before I tried to drive that shaft on through the housing. Uh, obviously, since I'm putting this uh, little clip in here, I didn't do that. And uh, you'll see later on in the video that as it was coming through, I assumed the key would catch on that housing and then just push itself out with that other piece. Uh, and as you'll see, it doesn't do that. It basically winds up driving itself through that housing and damaging the housing somewhat. Um, fortunately, I was able to save the housing, but I don't want you to make the same mistake I made. So do not try to drive this thing through without pulling that um, outer black piece off. Uh, that has to be removed, the key has to be removed, and then the shaft will come out. So let's continue with the mayhem. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, we're past the O-ring. Yeah, that thing, that's crazy that the that thing, uh, it's that hard to get out. Let's uh, let me tap it back down. Little tap tap, little tap tap. Let's see. Blaster on this side. Okay. It looks like this piece here is a uh, rather stuck on there and maybe that's what's causing it to uh, be so hard to get out yeah so I can see in there there's a lot of rust in there I don't know what if this is supposed to be some kind of little seal or what but it's I think it's broken let me chip some of this paint off here and just make sure it's not something hiding under here. Now I see there's a uh, there's a key here and maybe that's the deal. The key is uh, is rusted up on it. Oh yeah, I can see the bottom of the key here, so I think we're making progress. Let's see if I can get you guys a shot of this. Ugh. Let me wipe my hands off.
So in there is the key right there. You can see the top of it. Just right where my big fat finger is right there. Um, and again, I'll put an exploded view up here for you. So you can see. But uh, yeah, that should be coming out of there. We'll keep working it. Keep working it. Put it back this way. All right, let's see if we can get anything going here. Hey, come on now. Hey, that one's moving a lot easier. There we go. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, let me put some... Uh, Knock that back the other way, see if I can loosen it up. Which one look? Is it this one? Pretty rusty there. Let me move you around where you can actually see what's happening. Still a lot easier to move with your hand, but at least it's moving in and out this way easier. Yeah, there's the O-ring now. I'm gonna go ahead and order new, new O-rings for it. Regardless, now that I've beat on these and yeah, that's much better. Mucho better row. Yeah, you can see right there, it's pretty, pretty jacked up. Let me get some light sandpaper. This is like 120, so it's pretty light, but see if I can clean that up a little bit. Still's not wanting to turn in there. This thing should <clears throat> really turn pretty easily. <clears throat> yeah, you can 
see the rust on that side of it too. That's what it ought to do, right there, with your hand. <clears throat> I don't know why it was so messed up. Messed up, dude. But I am going to go ahead and uh, take it out. And uh, replace that O-ring. It's a little bit of a relief just to know that this is what it is because I thought it was out of adjustment that whole time. And uh, that it was something that I was doing that was preventing it from working properly, but definitely these things were. I don't know if I had any kind of small hone or anything to hone that, but uh, let's see if we can get this other brute out. Even though it's moving, I would like to replace the O-ring in there. And it's all about this piece here that's hung on there. I don't know if I had any kind of puller. If I could pull on that. I'm gonna show you what I did here just for educational purposes and so that you do not do what I did. Um, so do as I say, not as I do. But what I did was I just took that big hammer and just banged the shaft right out. And what it did was push that woodruff key right through the manifold housing. And um, that is not the way to remove this. In hindsight, you have to pull that little black uh, round thing off of the shaft and you have to remove that woodruff key before you push the shaft out so I'm going to show this just uh, just to show what kind of boob I was in doing this and uh, you'll see the aftermath of it but don't do what I did here There we go. Now that might have boogered up that shaft, but... Right about now is where my excitement turns to horror and disbelief as I realize I've just driven that key right through well, the manifold housing. You know what I've done? I think I've just effed up big time because that key was not supposed to go through there. It was supposed to be on the other side, and I've just driven it through. Just driven it through there, and that is not where it was supposed to go. <sighs> yeah. So I think I have just ruined this manifold here. Hmm. Well, learn from my mistakes, folks. See if I can get this bolt off of here.
I don't know what I was thinking. I was I guess I was thinking that key was going to come out with You know, when I drove it, I was hoping that key was going to come out, but there's the key. It was stuck in there, and then I wound up driving it through this manifold, which has now scarred up that uh, inside there. Not good. Hmm. You know, I don't know if that's salvageable or not. I see it's got a little bit of a groove on it there, but not too bad. It basically just put a notch here and then flattened the key out. It may be okay with the O-ring in there. Maybe I'll try it, see if it leaks. And if it does, then uh, can always deal with that later. But yeah, I'll uh, give you some close-ups of this and show you what happened. Here's a better view of that um, scratch. This is um, where, when I drove that shaft out, the key initially caught here. You see it made a big dent in the housing or this uh, manifold here. And fortunately, it smashed the key down and before it drove it through. So you can see there are some little hairline scratches here but I don't know if you can hear that or not as I run the pick over it yeah there's definitely some little dents in there particularly I mean you can see them there um, and that's where the key you can see exactly the width of the key here's one side and here's the other where it kind of pushed its way through um, I'm hoping since it's not very deep that uh, it's not going to leak because that is an o-ring in there so the o-ring should expand a bit to fill that void but we'll see if it does leak uh, we'll just deal with it then but this also is where that uh, friction washer goes on so it um, it will also let me open it up it will also be in front of it so uh, hopefully it will soak up maybe the oil that, if any, that comes out of there and then, you know, help that friction washer out. I wish I had saved the old one so you could see it literally looked like a piece of paper. It was so thin um, and it was worn out so much. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Let's reassemble it. Okay, we're about at the 30 minute mark on this video, so I'm going to stop it here and um, I'll do the next video on reassembling the unit and um, putting it back in the tractor. And if you want to know whether I was able to salvage that manifold, uh, you know, the one that I drove the shaft through with the key still in it, eh, you'll just have to tune into the next video. What kind of teaser is that? Thanks again for watching, and as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, do that too. So that really helps us out a lot too. And until next time, we'll see you here on Thistle Hill Farmstead.